We've already seen the Sangyong Muso, but this is the version most people are going to be interested in. It's the XLV, which stands for Extra Long Vehicle. Compared to the short wheelbase version, this has a longer tray and a longer wheelbase. And that means that it's eminently more practical than the short wheelbase version, which is hampered by its small tub. The extra length isn't all that's changed though. We'll get to everything that has changed in a sec. But first, if you want to read the full review, look in the description below. And also while you're there, hit like and subscribe. The Musso XLV is a very long ute. In fact, it's more than 5.4 meters in length. And a lot of the reason it looks so long comes down to this extended tray. There's an extra 310 millimeters of space in the tray back here, which is gonna make a huge difference if you do need to carry big loads. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest tubs in the class. And unlike plenty of other dual cab utes out there, this model comes with the choice of coil springs or leaf springs at the rear. And in the base model, there's a leaf spring setup with a better payload, which is more work focused. And in models like this one, which is a high grade, you get coil springs. You might be wondering if all this extra length has had any impact on cabin space. And the answer is no, because all the length has come from behind the back door and made its way back there. So let's have a look at the cabin anyway and see how it stacks up. Back seat space in the Musso is up there with the best in the segment. There's plenty of room behind this seat, which is set in my driver's position. I'm six foot tall. I've got lots of knee room, decent foot room, and plenty of headroom. And it's wide as well. Lots of the utes in this segment are quite narrow. So fitting three across here is a bit easier than some of the other utes out there. And you get things like rear seat air vents, which are a big bonus on hot days or really cold days like today. Plus there's cup holders in a flip down armrest, but sadly Sangyong persists with a lap only middle seat belt, which is really disappointing and poor for the class. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the Sangyong Musso's interior does feel more like an SUV than it does a ute. And there's a good reason for that because it's, it's based on an SUV, the Rexton. Now that means that you get some pretty passenger friendly features in here, like a big media screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There is no sat nav, which could be a disappointment for some people, but for me, I don't think it's that big of an issue. There is also a digital speedo in front of the driver, nice big screen, and that's in the top specs. Uh, there's a nice leather steering wheel, again, top spec, and it's also got heating, which is great on days like today. There's heated leather seats, again, top spec. So if you're buying the base model, you're not getting quite as much of the features that you might want, but it's pretty cheap. So it's not that hard to upsell yourself to the next model up, if you can excuse the fact that it's got coil springs instead of leaves. This car also has a sunroof, which is an option, and it's got those big chrome wheels you saw before, which are part of the option pack you can get, and it's the ultimate plus version. So it's already top of the range, and those extras do push the price a little too high for someone like me who loves a bargain. In terms of storage, there are good options. There's bottle holders in the front doors and the rear doors. There's a pair of cup holders up here. There's also a decent little center bin in here and a spot for your phone in front of the shifter. Just be careful because it might fall out. Now, let's take it for a drive. Just for reference, the Musso's we drove had nothing in the tray and there wasn't a chance to sample them with weight over the back axle. You have to wait for that test. So does the XLV version get anything extra under the bonnet? Well, there's the same 2.2 litre four cylinder turbo diesel with the same amount of power, 133 kilowatts, but with an extra 5% torque. So the torque figure is now 420 Newton meters, which isn't huge for the class, but it's not lagging behind some of its rivals. Of course, every Musso is diesel powered and four wheel drive. And there's the choice of the six speed manual, but only in the base model version and a six speed auto, which is in every other variant. So it's a standard fit for the ultimate and the ultimate plus, which is the one we're in right now. So because this is the ultimate plus, it still has the same coil spring suspension all around. So at the rear, there's a five link setup with coil springs, which does have a slightly lower payload than the version with leaf springs. Now that might matter to you or it might not. For me, the coil springs do feel just a little bit more fidgety over bumpy sections of road. The leaf spring version, which I drove earlier on today, was really impressive in the way it rode. 
much more stability at the back and a little less of that jittery feeling that you get in the coil spring versions. Now that's understandable because, you know, the coils have got to do two jobs. They've got to be able to cope with weight and they've also got to be able to be comfortable. So I can understand why there is a bit of a compromise to the ride. But that said, I reckon that the leaf spring version could be the surprise package here because it's so well sorted. Now you might be wondering why they've chosen to put a coil spring set up in the mid and top spec models and keep leaf springs for the base model only and it comes down to wheel size. Sadly you can only go up to a 17 inch wheel on the leaf springs and you can get 18s or 20s in the case of this model on the coil spring setup versions. Now wheel size might matter to you or it might not. If it doesn't maybe you're going to put a 17 inch steel wheel set on it anyway then you should probably check out the base model car because it's still well equipped sure it misses out on things like heated seats and leather but you do get a lot of value for money no matter whether you choose manual or automatic you're getting really decent engine refinement sure it might not be the most punchy engine out there but it is quiet and it is barely audible at speed like the most you notice in this car is actually a little bit of tire roar but generally the levels of noise vibration and harshness are pretty competitive one thing i've found with the musos i've driven so far is that the steering isn't perfect you can feel a lot of what's happening underneath the front axle particularly in the models with the coil springs and that's okay but it could be better in terms of the way that the steering actually reacts to inputs. It's good at higher speeds, lower speeds is a little bit slow but, and it's not on its own in the ute segment in that regard but I would say that there's still a little bit of work to be done in terms of steering precision but hey it's a ute, you might not care. The most important thing is that you can still perform a u-turn pretty easily, the turning circle is reasonable even though it is such a long vehicle. Visibility from the driver's seat is pretty good. You've got the 360 degree camera in this top spec version and there's a reverse camera in all models as well. And it's actually, you know, looking around the cabin, not too bad. If you're curious about safety equipment, the Musso XLV is loaded with the good stuff. All models have auto emergency braking and lane departure warning, plus a reversing camera and six airbags. Step up to the mid-spec and you'll get blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert and front and rear parking sensors, while the top grade has a 360 degree camera. When you're a Challenger brand you need to stand for something and Sangyong is putting ownership first for its customers. It has the best ute warranty you can get, a 7 year unlimited kilometre warranty with the same cover for roadside assist and there's a 7 year capped price service plan too and that doesn't depend on whether you're a private buyer or a commercial buyer that's for anyone who buys a Sangyong which is unlike some of the other competitors out there which will exclude ABN holders or commercial vehicle operators from having those perks and if you're worried about whether you'll be able to find a dealership if something does happen to go wrong then you'll be happy to know that the dealership network is expanding. There's 40 at the time we're filming this, but by the end of 2019, the brand claims there'll be 50 dealerships open. And that's important for consumers, especially if you're investing this kind of money. I also had a chance to sample the Musso XLV off-road, and in slippery conditions, it was pretty impressive, especially given it was on road tires. I put the low range gearing through its paces and the hill descent control system worked a treat down some very muddy drop offs. Yes, you have to be mindful of the approach and departure angles, but it performed pretty admirably in the rough stuff. So there you have it, the Sangyong Musso XLV. It is a more practical and more pragmatic option than the regular Musso but it is a little bit more expensive. You might have to factor that in. You do get more metal for your money and it is a better option in my opinion than the short wheelbase version. Tell us what you think in the comments section below and also while you're there, don't forget to hit subscribe.